Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley. You're tuned in to the NFL on EA Sports. What a game we have for you here. The first meeting of the year between two of the NFL's most hostile divisional rivals. This matchup always among the most anticipated games of the regular season. It's the Ravens going up against the Browns. With that, let's send it out to our broadcast team. Brandon Godden and Charles Davis with this Week 2 matchup. Larry, the Cavaliers may have lifted the local championship drought, but there's another team who'd like a little of that success, and that's the Browns as we come to you from First Energy Stadium here in Cleveland. Today, after a crazy opening weekend, it's on to Week 2, and we've got a good one here between the Baltimore Ravens and the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon, and Charles, we look at this Browns ball club. They come in off a good win on the road, and now they hit the home opener at 1-0. Meanwhile, for the visiting Ravens, they too were winners last time out, so something's got to give here. I love it when both teams come in off of wins. Great mindsets, and it usually leads to a really well-played game. Two teams here fresh off week one victories who can keep it going as we're underway on EA Sports. This is fielded a couple yards deep. Spinning past him. Oh, he did it again. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. So here come the Browns for their first drive on offense. They'll be let out by their quarterback from Central Florida. It's Blake Bortles. I don't care how many accolades you had in college. There's no such thing as a can't-miss quarterback. But Blake Bortles has shown in his time in the NFL that he's a guy that you can build a team around. Carry here for Charles Sims. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. And how about this wide receiving core, Charles? Well, I was at the hotel watching a little film, and you popped your head in and said, these receivers are pretty good from what I can tell. You're exactly right. Can't wait to see them do their thing out on the field. just a short pickup. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. The starters now defensively for Baltimore. Glover Quinn entered the league as a cornerback, but has evolved into one of the best free safeties in the NFL. This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Here we go. Blue 45. Blue 45. Throwing his Bortles on third down. Finding time. Right side caught Fedorowicz. A gain of eight and a first down. And there's a completion to the tight end. And look at the size of these players nowadays. At that spot, 6'4", six, 6'5", six, and up. A lot of guys used to be basketball players, somehow came back to football. And that's really good for the game of football. You get better athleticism, great hand-eye coordination, guys who know how to control their bodies when they run their routes. this up to about the 38-yard line. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. That's a good play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball. Held him to a gain of two. And that changes the playbook a little bit now for the guy calling plays. Second and eight. Now he's got to probably think about going to the air instead of maybe staying with the ground game. We got three. We got three, fellas. We got three. Green, 90. Green, 90. Again, they run with Sims. Nowhere to go that time. He maybe got a yard up to the 40. Telvin Smith that time there to make the play. Well, so many times we look at a short run and we praise the offense for trying to set the tempo and establish things. But the defensive guys, hey, they just won the battle there. It wasn't a big run given up. They don't always have to absorb the body blow. Sometimes they dish them out themselves. Green, 90. Green, 90. 
of the gun on third down. Bortles. He's got to, and he goes down. The Ravens able to get to him. Todd Davis in there to drop him with his first sack of 2016. And we say it all the time, have to be able to get rid of the ball sooner than that. You have to help your offensive line out. They're going to protect you as best they can. And if you're getting three to five seconds to throw the ball, they're doing a really nice job. But when you hold it and give up a sack, you're really almost discrediting their work. Now the four-year man out of Louisiana Tech. That's Ryan Allen on to kick this one away. And this is a beauty as that ball's going to angle out at the six-yard line. Tough spot here for the offense to start. Now a play fake here on first down. And he'll be out of bounds up past the 10-yard line. It's a gain of six on the play, and that'll make it second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. A little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Completed pass play. Now let's see if they go back to the air or to the ground. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. Give him a yard on the run there, and that's going to set up a third down and two. Well, I think we know by now that every run is not going to be broken and get all the way to the end zone. But these short ones still have their value. You can still set up your play action and throw the football. You control the clock because the, you have the ball and they don't. And often the physicality sets the tempo for the game. Looks like a nickel set here defensively on third and two. Yeah, maybe expecting a throw. Now Newton. They got a man. It's Woods. And 12 yards that time and picking up the first. And Brandon, from our time in college football, where receivers weren't running the traditional NFL route tree, one thing they did learn, find open areas, find soft spots, and set up and catch the ball. And I think we just saw that there. Yeah, we saw that indeed picking up the first. Now Newton on first down. Surveying the field. Cam fighting. He lost the football. It's out. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back. Because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. On second down, here's Newton. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the field. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. On every offensive coordinator, every play caller sheet, they have about five or six plays per game that they call shot plays or big plays. And you don't get many opportunities to dial them up. And they just did. And they drop it with a great chance to make a big play. That's going to hurt. And the offense looking to pick up the first down after the second down incompletion. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. Play action. It's Newton. He's going to try and go deep again. And that one incomplete. Had some position but couldn't hold on and it brings up fourth down. And when all else fails as a defender, when you're not there in the coverage... Your best friend is exactly what we saw there. A big play shot taken by the offense. Unfortunately, it ended in a big drop. Fourth down, so on is the punter, Riley Dixon.
<laughs> It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the Browns will take over first and 10. And here's the Ravens' defense as they head back out there now. They did their job last go-around, forced the punt, hoping for more of that here. They got off the field. That's exactly what they wanted to accomplish. Get off the field, turn the ball over to their offense, and kick back and enjoy a little bit of water and rest before they have to go back out there again. Back out there now, hoping to hurry up and get more water and rest. They go play action here on first down. And the Raven pressure too much. Down he goes. It looks like a loss of right around 11 there on first down to set him back on second. Well, so much for setting the tone of the drive offensively. Giving up a big sack that loses that kind of yardage, not a great start. So we've reached the end of a fairly even first quarter of play. Nothing, nothing, our score. EA Sports NFL Sunday returns following this. This presentation of the NFL on EA Sports is brought to you by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden. The Browns with a football to begin quarter number two, but they face a second and long to start things out. Larry, Larry, Larry. Here we go. Three, 39. On second down, here's Borles. He's got time. And he's got him over the middle. Fedorowicz. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle, he can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Now Bortles, he finds Quick, and he's got a first down as he's up. guys told us, these guys being the coaches, they wanted to really stretch the field, get the ball down deep. They were able to do that here. And you know when you stretch the field, you often leave guys in one-on-one -on -one situations, and that allows your better athletes to go up and get the football. I love the preparation that they put into this. They made it a priority, and they got what they expected. Sims takes to midfield but no further just a yard there tackle made that time by Brandon Graham I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game you're now doing the dictating on defense and guess what now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time but you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature and make sure you don't get hurt from midfield here's Bortles finding time wide open receiver complete So holding by the offense and maybe now got to shift up what you want to do on the playbook. Yeah, definitely. Change what you're doing in the playbook, but boy, the advantage shifts to the guys on defense, doesn't it? Longer yardage situations, they often become bolder. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll be tackled right on the midfield logo. It'll be a pickup of 10 yards, and it'll be third down. It seemed like the situation was second and a mile to go for a first down, which screams what? 
throw the football. You got to pass in order to try and pick up that kind of yardage. But in this case, they ran a tendency breaker because the tendency is for defenses to be out there and be set up for a pass. So you break tendency and actually run the football. That changes everything because if you're able to find a crease, you often have bigger guys working against smaller guys downfield. They picked up excellent yardage there to bring up the third down. And incomplete. He had nowhere to throw, so he just tossed it away. But that brings up fourth. Partner, how many times have you heard it? Pressure creates diamonds, right? <laughs> but it also bursts pipes. And on that one, that's what they got. They got after him, and he was fortunate just to get rid of it. Yeah, he just had to chuck it away. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that'll hit in the end zone. Much too much leg there. That'll be a touchback. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And on the last go-around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency, move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Now a play fake here on first down. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Lamar Houston in from his linebacker spot. He's able to drop him for a loss of about 10. Man, he got in there so quickly, Charles. What could the offense have done to adjust and account for that? But what you're hoping is that you figure out and you see and get a clue that maybe there's going to be some pressure coming at you. And you change the blocking schemes. Maybe you go to max protection. The biggest one is maybe you bring your running back in to try and keep you clean. But in that case, that didn't happen. Zero accountability and a sack resulted. The one running back is Gurley. There's Newton now on second down. Going to throw right side here, complete. They get 14 back, but it leads now to a third down. He had time, was able to survey the field and find a soft spot in that zone coverage. And that's where it gets difficult for a defender, Brandon. You go to your spots on the field that you have to cover, and when the offense finds an area that you're not in, that's where they throw the football. Defense sinking pass. They've got the nickel set out on third and six. Throwing on third down. Newton is going to hit his man out of the backfield. Complete. Two minutes remain in a scoreless first half. More from Cleveland after this. A reminder, coming up at halftime, we'll check in with Larry Ridley for highlights and analysis of our first half of play. Now, not too many highlights yet, at least in terms of scoring plays, that is. Yeah, but hang in there. We might get something these last two minutes. And here's a very low line drive, almost whiffed on it. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. Officially, that'll be marked down as just a 28-yard punt. And possession will switch hands first and 10. And now Cleveland geared up to take the field. And a tight game after punting last time. See if they can get something going on this drive. As they head to the field now with the game this close, You've got to feel there's a sense of urgency for them going on offense right now. But they have to do it without letting panic creep in and affect their play. That's caught. Fedorowicz. Ten yards on the pick up there. And it'll give the Browns a first down. And now they're in the hurry up. Bortles now on first down. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Trip Cole from his outside linebacker spot, forcing the sack for a loss of eight.
Play action. Now it's Bortles. He's got time in the pocket. Great protection. He rifles one that's intercepted. Picked off by Kamal Ishmael. And the return stops just a few yards shy of midfield. They'll spot the ball at the 47-yard line. Naturally, we're going to say it was a poor pass, but the defensive guys say it was just a great play by them. They broke on the football, picked it off, and gave some momentum to their team. And the Ravens taking the field. And three and out on the last drive. No points on the scoreboard. A little soul searching now. I would say so, and they need to help out their defense a little bit. They've had to be on the yeah, field a lot position. more than normal, put them in some tough spots. But what's the old adage? When you get another chance, it gives you a better chance to do it right. Now following the interception, here's Newton. He'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he's brought down. It's a pickup of 16 there, and it'll lead to a new set of downs. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. They come out five wide, three of them to the right side. Now Newton on first down. Throw right side, complete to Williams. Sheds a second man. He's building up some momentum, isn't he? They call it a gain of 19, and it moves the chains. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. And now the offense operates in the red zone. They go play action here on first down. And a big loss here as he's taken down. It'll be a loss of 10. And it'll bring up second. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. Second down, here's Newton. And that's caught left side, it's Woods. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Robert Woods, as the first half is winding down, and the Ravens are in for six. And that touchdown gives them a touchdown lead before they attempt the extra point. What a great way to end the half. Yeah, great job to put themselves in front, and now see on the sideline special teams defense scrambling saying we want to preserve this for the final moments of this second quarter now Josh Scobie to attempt the extra point and oh it's blocked now it's scooped up and this is a live football but he will not be able to bring this one back in the extra point attempt unsuccessful I know it's easy to kind of shrug off a blocked extra point, but this game is shaping up to be a tight one. The second half, this could prove crucial. Yeah, we might look back on this one. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, following the touchdown, Josh Scobie now will kick it away. That'll be taken in the end zone. And this will be a touchback, and as we saw in week one, the new rule, this one coming out to the 25-yard line. Now the Browns offense, they get ready to head back onto the field. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Around the drive starts with Sims. And he'll take this up near the 35, maybe the 34. 
Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first, so they'll have two remaining here before we get to halftime. Now Bortles throwing on second down. A dump off to Sims. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. They'll come out in the pistol. Bortles now on first down. Serve nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. And with halftime on the horizon, they'll be out of timeouts from here forward. A final shot before half for Bortles. He's going to float this one deep right side. Looking for Baldwin intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And he will be brought down. His time has now run out on this first half of action. Thanks, Brandon. I'm Larry Ridley, and welcome to our EA Halftime Report. The Browns had a great passing game going last week, but haven't put up the same type of numbers so far. The Ravens' defense obviously has something to do with that and should be credited. So let's take a look at the highlights from the first half. Now to late in the first. Jackson's able to zero in on the QB here. This will go as a loss of 10. Browns now late in the second. The pass ends up being picked off. Ishmael's is happy to come away with the pick, ending the drive. After the pick, offense comes out now. So once again, sack the QB. This will go as a loss of 10. Offense out now following the INT. Woods is able to make the catch in traffic. And nobody can stop him on this long touchdown. Ravens go up by six. All right, Larry, thank you. A fairly tight game here as we get set to resume play in this second half. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This is taken at the three. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. Up come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. And they were able to punch it in the end zone last time. They'll be looking to do that again here for the defense. Obviously, they'll be looking to stop them from punching it back in the end zone. It always is punch counter punch, isn't it? And which team has the advantage? Well, let's just go back. Last time on offense, they rolled downfield, got into a good rhythm. You can see a little more bounce in and out of the huddle. You can see the sideline really get into the game. So defensively, you're thinking to yourself, how do we take that away from them? How do we get the advantage back? Let's see what they come up with. I think pressure is always the first way to go. <laughs> you love pressure. We'll I see, love we'll it. We'll see if they dial it up this drive. Still first down. Shotgun snap for Newton. He's got time. It's complete. This is Brent Salad. And he's eventually brought down, but not before he reaches the 39, just shy of the 40. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. It, he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, I, I know how to beat that, and that's what he did. Now a first down throw for Newton. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Ryan Shazier able to run him down for a loss of a yard. You know, on these types of plays, we're always looking to assess blame. Okay, where did it break down? Sometimes it's just a great play.
So the defense gets to the quarterback. Now the offense backed up on second down. Here's Newton now on second down. Finding time. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. A lot of time there, partner, in the protected pocket, and he was able to deliver. The guys protecting the passer have allowed him plenty of time to go through his progressions and find open receivers. Third down and one. Newton looking to throw on third and one. And it's caught by Salah. And he's got the first down yardage before he's brought down at the 42. Would it be safe to say that as precise as routes are supposed to be run in the NFL, maybe they're not quite as precise in college ball? That's accurate, yeah. And I think we saw a college route in the NFL there. Just find the soft spot, find the dead zone, and find the first down. And that's what he just did. They go play action here on first down. And he's got room. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Seven yards on the play, and it'll be second down. Off play action, Newton. He's got that. No escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Bruce Irvin in there to get him for a loss of five. Yeah, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway. But when he gets that kind of a start and comes still clean, oftentimes the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. And a good quarterback facing zone coverage. If he has just a little bit of time to survey the scene, that's what's going to happen. No doubt about it. If there's no pressure, he's going to continue to pick them apart because he'll have all that time to find someone open downfield. You can only cover for so long. So maybe they want to go to a zone blitz scheme, get a little bit more pressure. Remember when Carolina did that against Denver? They lost the game ultimately. They dropped the defensive end out, and he ended up with an interception in that game in Super Bowl 50. Maybe some sort of scheme like that to try and get more pressure at the passer. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage back at the 22. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. <laughs> one thing I know, defensive coaches love it when they don't have to invite their players to the party. This strong safety, you never have to ask him twice to help in run support. He's going to arrive and in a bad mood. On second down, here's Newton surveying the field. And he's going to be taken down here. A sack back at the 32. The reigning defensive player of the year, J.J. Watt, in there to record another sack. Their sixth of the afternoon. Boy, he came in off the edge so quickly there. Look out, because that's exactly what it was being shouted by the offensive lineman to his quarterback because he had no chance to block him. like we've got a dime set here defensively. Six DBs in the game. Third and long. It's Newton. He's got time. Dumps it off to Gurley. And he'll be out of bounds. Able to get it down to the 25 there. Call it a pickup of seven. And that's going to make it fourth down. So many times you hear today's NFL described as a space game. Get your best players into space with the football in their hands. That's why sometimes you just swing it out to your runner, get him out in the flat, and let him have a chance to make people miss an open field. So fourth down coming up, John Harbaugh send on the field goal unit. Right hash mark, a 42-yard attempt. And it is good. Oh, that one looked to be in trouble the whole way, but it does get over the bar. And that will make our score 9 to nothing. And that field goal caps an 11-play drive. 
That's a lot of offense to run to only get three points, but they'll take them. Anytime you can put anything on the board, you run to your sideline somewhat happy. Scobie now to kick it away after the made field goal. This fielded at the two. <laughs> and a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And this should be the final play before the quarter ends. to start the drive to Sims looking for a crease can't find one stopped at the line of scrimmage we have played three quarters we'll return with more after this you're watching the NFL on EA Sports and we're back now here in Cleveland it's the Browns with a deficit they're trailing but with the football here to start the fourth It's a five-receiver set, three to the left, two to the right. Now Bortles throwing on second down. He's got quick. That catch good for five. It's third down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks... Those guys are worth their weight in gold. He finds his man, Baldwin. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And a two-score game, obviously. Every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get the third down. They've got to maximize time and conserve as much as possible. time and no escaping this time as he'll go down they got him for a sack Brandon Graham in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon well how about that a dime set on defense six defensive backs none of them blitz they're just back there in coverage defensive lineman gets the sack that's where the o-line they go to the sideline they keep the, their helmets on so the cameras can't find them right yeah the cameras can't find them but I know one thing the o-line coach will his way forward here for a good little game. Glover Quinn there on the stop. Frustrating for a defense, energizing for an offense. Finding a way to create that type of yardage in your running game, that'll make the guys carrying the ball very, very happy. The offense staring at a third and 12 here. Throwing his Bortles on third down. And that one goes incomplete on the drop. That's one he definitely normally catches. Fourth down. We know it's not an easy job to go out and catch passes when people are trying to tackle you and knock the ball away. But the bottom line is, that's a pass he's got to have and a pass he should have caught. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. Now Bortles. Got to have this one. And here's a first NFL catch for Josh Doxson. 18 yards the game for number 18. 
And that's a big pickup of a first down. And you know that all week, both sides of the ball, offense and defense, are going through every situation. And in this case, the offensive guys had the right play dialed up because defensively, you work on fourth down situations as well. And deflating for the defense. They can't get the stop here. Here's Bortles. He's got it complete to Diggs right side. And down inside the 15 he goes. Give him 16 on the pickup. And that'll be good for a Cleveland first. That was a nice completion on an out route. And those types of plays are the result of arm strength by the quarterback and timing by the receiver. So they're operating in the red zone. Backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. A loss of a full three yards, and now it's second down. And that's another stop for the defense, something we've seen all game long. They have been on fire today. No matter what's called by the offense, they've had an answer for it. And this will probably be the final play before the two-minute warning. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. Time for a break. We'll come back to wrap this one up after this. So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Well, just play after play after play on this long drive for the offense. And they'll add a DB in the secondary here on third and 14. On third and long, it's Bortles. And this is intercepted, and that should do it. It's the 2014 NFL interception leader, Glover Quinn. Scoring has really been at a premium. And, Charles, you got to tip your cap to this defense coming in here. Their offense, too, but this whole team coming in here on the road, getting a hard-fought win. I think the way that they're finishing this one up, an exclamation point on a terrific game. As you noted, hard for them to put points on the board, and they hold them down one more time and finalize things. The Browns' defense getting ready. And a pretty nice job last time. Gave up quite a bit of yardage, but only gave up the field goal. Almost feel like we should give them a little bit of a round of applause for being able to dig in at the end of a long drive. Usually when those types of drives happen, they result in touchdowns because you've broken the defense. They found some resolve in there and held them to a field goal. Yeah, they found the resolve. Now they'll be looking to give up zero points this time. And now a timeout called defensively by the Browns. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. And the offense moving in the wrong direction here now as they face a second and 12. Again, they run with Gurley. And he finds some space past the 25 to the 27. And now the Browns are going to take another timeout. That'll be their second, so one more chance to stop the clock here. And we'll be back. So following the run, we'll see what they do here on third down. The one running back is Gurley. Now Newton. And it's caught by Salah. And he's able to get the first before he's taken down at the 36. Now hang on here. Timeout called. Timeout called by the defense. 
It'll be their third and final timeout, so as they talk things over, we'll step aside. Fresh set of downs here. On the handoff, it's Gurley. A strong running. And he's brought down. A nice little juke move that preceded it, but not much thereafter. Partner, we know today's NFL is really built around the guy throwing the football. But these short runs, they still pay dividends because they can take their toll on a defense and they can add up as the game goes along. You control the clock, you control the ball, and that way you often control the game. Now on second down, this is Gurley. And he takes this up right near the 45-yard line. Good work to pick up seven yards there. That gets him into a third-and-one situation. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. They'll try and pick up the first with Gurley. And they will finally catch him, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. Now hold everything here. We're going to get a timeout by the offense. It's just their first. They've got two more to use here in the final stages. So after that big play, let's see if they can catch their defense maybe on their heels. They come out here in the eye. On first and goal, Gurley. And they'll get him down here at about the five-yard line. Give him three on the game there, second and goal. The offense is in total control right now. And while they don't want to be in... Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. And on the outside, they're playing press coverage. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's maybe going to get this back to the four, but that's about all. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. The storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is. And what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team. There's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column, too? So for Baltimore, it was a great all-around performance as they come out of this one with the victory. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Jacksonville to take on the Jaguars. Meanwhile, for Cleveland, they'll fall to 1-1. One and one. And they'll look to regroup next week as they head down to Miami to take on the Dolphins. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn. And this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. With that, we say so long from Cleveland.